Welcome and thank you for joining me for day 74 of Bible in a Year New International Version. Today we'll be going over Judges 9 and 10. Judges 9. Abimelech son of Jerubbaal went to his mother's brothers in Shechem and said to them and to all his mother's clan, Ask all the citizens of Shechem, which is better for you, to have all seventy of Jerubbaal's sons rule over you or just one man? Remember I am your flesh and blood. When the brothers repeated all this to the citizens of Shechem, they were inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. They gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple at Balbareth, and Abimelech used it to hire reckless adventurers who became his followers. He went to his father's home in Ophrah, and on one stone murdered his seventy brothers, the sons of Jerubbaal. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, escaped by hiding. Then all the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shechem to crown Abimelech king. When Jotham was told about this, he climbed up on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted to them, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. One day the trees went out to anoint a king for themselves. They said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, Should I give up my oil, by which both gods and men are honored, to hold sway over the trees? Next the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, Should I give up my fruit, so good and sweet, to hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, Should I give up my wine, which cheers both gods and men, to hold sway over the trees? Finally all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come and be our king. The thorn bush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, come and take refuge in my shade, but if not, then let fire come out of the thorn bush and consume the cedars of Lebanon. Now if you have acted honorably and in good faith when you made Abimelech king, and if you have been fair to Jerubbaal and his family, and if you have treated him as he is deserves, and to think that my father fought for you, risked his life to rescue you from the hand of Midian. But today you have revolted against my father's family, murdered his seventy sons on a single stone, and made Abimelech, the son of his slave girl, king over the citizens of Shechem, because he is your brother. If then you have acted honorably and in good faith toward Jerubbaal and his family today, may Abimelech be your joy, and may you be his too. But if you have not, let fire come out from Abimelech and consume you, citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo. And let fire come out of you, citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and consume Abimelech. Then Jotham fled, escaping to Beer, and he lived there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. After Abimelech had governed Israel three years, God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the citizens of Shechem who acted treacherously against Abimelech. God did this in order that the crime against Jerubbaal's seventy sons, the shedding of their blood, might be avenged on their brother Abimelech's son and on the citizens of Shechem, who had helped him murder his brothers. In opposition to him, these citizens of Shechem sent men on the hilltops to ambush and rob everyone who passed by, and this was reported to Abimelech. Now Gal, son of Abed, moved with his brothers into Shechem, and its citizens put their confidence in him. After they had gone out into the fields and gathered the grapes and trodden them, they held a festival in the temple of their god. While they were eating and drinking, they cursed Abimelech. Then Gal, son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech, and who is Shechem, that we should be subject to him? Isn't he Jerubbaal's son, and isn't Zabal his deputy? Serve the men of Hamor, Shechem's father. Why should we serve Abimelech? If only this people were under my command, then I would get rid of him. I would say to Abimelech, Call out your whole army. When Zebul, the governor of the city, heard what Gal, son of Ebed, had said, he was very angry. Under cover, he sent messengers to Abimelech, saying, Gal, son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to Shechem and are stirring up the city against you. Now then, during the night, you and your men should come and lie in wait in the fields. In the morning at sunrise, advance against the city. When Gal and his men come out against you, do whatever your hand finds to do. So Abimelech and all his troops set out by night and took up concealed positions near Shechem in four companies, had gone out and was standing at the entrance to the city gate just as Abimelech and his soldiers came out from their hiding place. When Gal saw them, he said to Zebul, Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. Zebul replied, You mistake the shadows of the mountains for men. But Gal spoke up again, Look, people are coming down the center of the land, and a company is coming from the direction of the soothsayer's tree. Then Zebul said to him, Where's your big talk now, you who said, Who is Abimelech, that we should be subject to him? Aren't these the men you ridiculed? Go out and fight them. So Gal led out the citizens of Shechem and fought Abimelech. Abimelech chased him, and many fell wounded in the flight all the way to the entrance to the gate. Abimelech stayed in the Rumah, and Zebul drove Gal and his brothers out of Shechem. 
The next day the people of Shechem went out to the fields, and this was reported to Abimelech. So he took his men, divided them into three companies, and set an ambush in the fields. When he saw the people coming out of the city, he rose to attack them. Abimelech and the companies with him rushed forward to a position at the entrance to the city gate. The two companies rushed upon those in the fields and struck them down. All that day Abimelech pressed his attack against the city until he captured it and killed its people. Then he destroyed the city and scattered salt over it. On hearing this, the citizens in the tower of Shechem went into the stronghold of the temple at El Bereth. When Abimelech heard that they had assembled there, he and all his men went up Mount Zalman. He took an axe and cut off some branches, which he lifted to his shoulders. He ordered the men with him, Quick, do what you have seen me do. So all the men cut branches and followed Abimelech. They piled them against the stronghold and set it on fire over the people inside. So all the people in the tower of Shechem, about a thousand men and women, also died. Next Abimelech went to Thebes and besieged it and captured it. Inside the city, however, was a strong tower, to which all the men and women, all the people of the city, fled. They locked themselves in and climbed up on the tower roof. Abimelech went to the tower and stormed it, but as he approached the entrance to the tower to set it on fire, a woman dropped an upper millstone on his head and cracked his skull. Draw your sword and kill me, so that they can't say a woman killed him. So his servant ran him through, and he died. When the Israelites saw that Abimelech was dead, they went home. Thus God repaid the wickedness that Abimelech had done to his father by murdering his seventy brothers. God also made the men of Shechem pay for all their wickedness. The curse of Jotham, son of Jerubbaal, came on them. Judges 10 After the time of Abimelech, a man of Issachar, Tola, son of Pua, the son of Dodo, rose to save Israel. He lived in Shemir, in the hill country of Ephraim. He led Israel twenty-three years, and then he died, and was buried in Shemir. He was followed by Jer of Gilead, who led Israel twenty-two years. He had thirty sons who rode thirty donkeys. They controlled thirty towns in Gilead, which to this day are called Havath Jer. When Jer died, he was buried at Kimon. Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, and the gods of Aram, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And because the Israelites forsook the Lord and no longer served him, he became angry with them. He sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites, who that year shattered and crushed them. For eighteen years they oppressed all the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan in Gilead, the land of the Amorites. The Ammonites also crossed the Jordan to fight against Judah, Benjamin, and the house of Ephraim, and Israel was in great distress. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord, We have sinned against you, forsaking our God and serving the Baals. The Lord replied, When the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Maonites oppressed you, and you cried to me for help, did I not save you from their hands? But you have forsaken me and served other gods, so I will no longer save you. Go and cry out to the gods you have chosen. Let them save you when you are in trouble. But the Israelites said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do with us whatever you think best, but please rescue us now. Then they got rid of the foreign gods among them and served the Lord, and he could bear Israel's misery no longer. When the Ammonites were called to arms and camped in Gilead, the Israelites assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of the people of Gilead said to each other, Whoever will launch the attack against the Ammonites will be the head of all those living in Gilead. Thank you for joining me for Day 74 of Bible in a Year New International Version. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Day 75.